Hey everyone, this is Kevin T. Rodriguez, film critic of iCritic.net, and I want to make this video for Scott Kurtz, the creator of this webcomic, PvP. I don't know if he will actually end up seeing this video. I hope that if it comes across him, and I'm going to share it to him personally, hopefully he will take the time to watch it and listen to my concerns that I have about an email I got today. Now, for those of you who are not aware of what this is, this is a webcomic called PvP, aka Player vs. Player. It has been running for some 20 plus years, and I'm going to admit I've been reading it for about 16 or 17 of those years. And I'm not just a casual fan, if you will. Uh, not to toot my own horn, not to say that this makes my opinion about the current situation that we are going to discuss any more valid, but I have been reading this webcomic since I was like 17 or 18 years old. I'm now 35. I have supported the comic strip in various forms. In fact, that includes buying Image Comics and buying collections. I've actually met Scott a few times. Here's some pictures of us at a Comic-Con from years ago. I was a lot younger. And I'm wearing sunglasses because, well, I was camera shy back then. I, I technically still am camera shy, but obviously I have to get over that if I'm going to be doing this. And I also contributed to this um, Kickstarter. Uh, to celebrate the 20-year anniversary of PvP, Scott Kurtz decided he wanted to collect the entire series into a book collection. I have pledged... $250 of money towards this project. And with this, what I got was, or what I was going to be getting, eight volumes of the PvP Definitive Edition hardcovers, uh, a PDF file, the 20th Anniversary Retrospective Hardcover, as well as PDF, and Kickstarter exclusive extras. None of which includes, you know, an original sketch or anything, but that is fine by me. Because having met Scott a couple times, I have original sketches like this that I have enjoyed very much so over the years. When you look down at um, what this was about, um, you know, they share some of the favorite comics, of course. But the whole point of this was that this Kickstarter will help us collect the first 20 years of PvP comics in their entirety, plus an additional tome of never-before-seen content designed by famed illustrator designer Rob Armbrister with over 2,500 pages collected into nine full color oversized 12 by 10 hardcover volumes. These will truly be the definitive editions of PVP online. There are two things I want to mention in this description. Collecting the first 20 years of PVP comics in their entirety, um, I don't know why that went that way. Um, and that these would be the definitive editions of PvP online. And that's the main reason I contributed to this Kickstarter. Now, I contributed more because you have these pins and these cards. And, you know, I I wanted the whole collection. So, you know, it, I think there was... I definitely did not mind paying more. I, I like my collections to be complete. That's why I have the entire series of the Pirates of the Caribbean films, even though I like one film. That's one of the problems with being a completionist collector of physical media. But here's the thing. Make no mistake. This was sold on the promise that it would be definitive and complete, or at least as complete as it could be. Because I actually have one of the anniversary books that have original comics that Scott made, that don't have dialogue because the dialogue was lost to time. You know, situations like that, all right, fine, I understand it. You do what you can. However, Scott sent a letter to, or this is an update, to people who kickstarted back to the project. It's backers only. And that's why I'm going to read this whole letter. Now, if you happen to get this letter, and Scott, if you're watching this, you can skip... I'm going to put like a skip to thing because I'm going to read the whole letter word for word 
just so that everyone is absolutely clear about what you wrote, and then I'm going to discuss my thoughts about it and my concerns. And the title of this was To Edit or Not to Edit, which seemed like an odd title because it was like, well, of course they're going to edit the books, you got to format them, but that wasn't what he was talking about. And Scott writes, Hey backers, Scott here. I need your help. In the process of doing final pass on these books before they head to the printer, and while reading over 20 years of comic strips, I'm finding myself more and more horrified when I encounter strips that contain writing I not now find to be pretty sexist, homophobic, or generally insensitive. They contain, they contain jokes I would never make now. Contain words I would never use. I did back then, clearly. I guess I didn't see a problem with it then, but we all grow and learn and change. I hate reading these questionable strips now. They're embarrassing and they don't represent who I am as a person or what I want to be represented with my work, but they are a part of my work nonetheless. Warts and all. This is my body of work. I can't change that. And it's crazy to look back over 20 years and not see just an improvement in art and writing, but an improvement in myself as a person and what I put out into the world. I know that Francis spent his early character arcs as the stereotypical toxic homophobic gamer dude, but I can't excuse these strips as some kind of deft commentary because I had no concept of what feminism or misogyny really was. I grew up in whitey, white town texas and i went to school at cis normative high one of my closest friends in high school who i'm still close to today didn't come out to me until three years ago and looking back i don't blame him in short i don't know whether to include some of these strips in this collection is it wrong to remove them is it wrong to keep them in i'm not trying to hide the sins of my past but I dread having some young kid pick up one of these books and read the storyline where Francis squeezes Jade's boob or responds to someone else's comment as gay. I considered opening the book with a foreword explaining all of this, but who reads those anyways and is that enough? And what happens when someone picks up the book, strips the foreword and sorry, skips the foreword and just jumps to the middle to read a strip, which is what you do with collections like these? So I guess I'm looking for some input from all, from you all as we do our final steps before print. Some guidance here. You kids have been with me for 20 years now. Some of you have met me, met my family. You've had kids of your own. What should I do here? What's the right play? This is an important final step in the preparation of this definitive collection. It is our last chance to make changes before these books exist in print forever. I need to get it right. Let me know your thoughts thoughts scott so then i have read the whole letter without adding my commentary i am now going to reread it again but this time i'm going to be throwing in my commentary and i am going to um, be giving my thoughts now first of all i will say i am very happy that scott is actually coming to his backers and he's asking his backers specifically he didn't go on twitter where i'm sure he knew the response would be different. He wants to know about the people who have contributed money to this. Money that, like, say, well, uh, $250 or so. <laughs> and I am more than happy to not only share my advice, but I also have to share my concerns because this is, in my opinion, a concerning development. And just to let you know where I stand when it comes to censorship, most of you know my position. If you've been watching this channel for a little while, you know I am against censorship i do not believe in it i do not believe in cancel culture i believe we learn more from our mistakes when we face them rather than when we hide them in fact there was like a great scene in the movie milk starring sean penn and directed by gus van sant that has always stood with me and i have actually used this advice for most of how i deal with you know, showing my work, my videos, my writings to people. Um, and I find that the situation applies to anything, really. But uh, Harvey Milk and his uh, boyfriend, I believe his name was Scott, I, interestingly, uh, they get a death threat. And his boyfriend puts it in the drawer and 
uh, Harvey takes it out and he puts it on the fridge. And Scott's like, why would you do that? It's repulsive. And he's like, yeah, but you put it in the drawer and it's like this repulsive thi thing. It's this nightmare. It, it just gnaws away at you. You put it on the fridge, you're forced to confront it and it can't scare you anymore. And I might have been paraphrasing, of course, because I, forgive me if I don't quote this 100% with accuracy, but I believe that this was wise. And I've actually now, I now approach this with a lot of subjects in life, whether it's with my online career, such as it is, or not. I approach like I would rather confront issues than hide from them. I felt this way before I saw that movie, but I feel even more strongly now that the more we hide from our past, the more we like to pretend it doesn't exist, the more we're going to repeat, doomed to repeat it and the less we learn because we're not confronting anything, we're hiding it. So that's my general stance on censorship. That said, Scott Kurtz, the cartoonist, does raise some valid points, so I would like to address all of them and then offer some potential suggestions. And again, hopefully he has the patience for this. So Okay, I'm going to just kind of skim, but here's the thing. Um, he find, he finds some strips that he finds pretty sexist, homophobic, and generally insensitive. And, yeah, that's going to happen. When you're a comedian, you're going to make sexist and homophobic or insensitive jokes. That's kind of the nature of the game. But here's the thing. He admits right off the bat that we all learn, grow, learn, and change. So, here's the thing. I would hope, at this point, the conversation would have ended... Because it's like, yeah, we learn, we grow, we change. Problem is, we do live in cancel culture. So, I mean, I'm not going to say that this is entirely because of cancel culture. But I would not be surprised if it was part of the reason. And he probably also does feel bad. I'm not, I don't doubt his sincerity about that. But here's the thing. He hates reading these questionable strips now. They're embarrassing and they don't represent who I am as a person or what I want to be represented with my work. But they are part of my work nonetheless. Warts and all. This is my whole body of work. I can't change that. Yeah, but here's the thing. You are releasing these books. In fact, let's go back over here. Let's look at the covers of the books. Um, you can see that they're actually labeled by year. I don't. I, I know it's kind of going by, but the books are labeled by year. So I think most people will understand these books come from a different time and a different era. I mean, I, I, at least I would hope so. Admittingly, we are in an era where people are far less forgiving and they're actually digging up the past to hurt you in the present, so that is a concern. Again, I don't know if that's the main reason he's asking about this, but it's something to consider. So here's the thing. Uh, he, he mentions how um, he had a friend who didn't come out to him until three years ago, and he looking back, he doesn't blame him. You know what? That's a very personal story. That's probably also contributing to it. But here's where we get to the meat and potatoes of the thing. In short, I don't know whether to close these, some of these strips in this collection. Is it wrong to remove them? Uh, in my opinion, yes, it is very wrong to remove them. This is part of your history. This was part of who you are. Yes, it's a little. You might feel a little ashamed of it, but the thing is, you don't. You don't earn brownie points for pretending this never happened, because here's the thing: those strips are online. I guarantee you, with this email, people will be saving the strips. They're probably going through your entire archive right now, saving every single strip they can. And if you start removing them from the books, and worse, removing from the website, people will bring them back to light, and they will become a big problem. The fact that you bother to remove them at all will show to people who are not aware of the chain of the later strips who might not understand that or maybe they will understand that this is in the past but they don't care the fact that you take time to remove him says he's trying to pretend he's not a piece of garbage human being he was sexist he was homophobic no you're not he made some jokes they were in poor taste they probably will look a lot worse now but it is wrong to remove them because by removing them you are saying you are giving them the ammunition they need to say you are all of these things and again, I want to stress, this is a definitive collection, but we'll continue. He says, I'm not trying to hide this in my past, but I dread having some young kid pick up one of these books and read the storyline where Francis squeezes Jade's boobs or responds to someone else's comment as gay. Well, as someone who's been reading your comic for 18 years, um, let me just say this 
I will not let my kids read PvP. I will, ne I will never let them read PvP until they're much older. With all due respect, I don't consider PvP to be a children's comic. In fact, I bet you if somebody told you that PvP was a children's comic and you shouldn't swear, you should be maybe more like Peanuts. Why can't you be like Peanuts? That was good and wholesome. You'd probably get offended at that notion. In fact, I suspect you would get offended. I suspect you've had conversations like that before. It, because you want to have humor that's grounded somewhat in reality. You're not writing for a family audience. You're writing for you. And you are not a kid. And me reading them and me buying these books, I'm not a kid either. Now, should my kids read these comics at some point in time? We're going to have a conversation about it. But you have my word, my personal word, that when I have kids and, and should they read PvP, I will explain to them what these jokes mean, what time they came from, and how you changed, and how the world changed, and how this was not acceptable anymore. Much like when I show them the Tom and Jerry cartoons with Mammy Two Shoes, or I show them a Goofy cartoon, where Goofy's puffing up in smoke. I will explain to my kids that this is just what things were like at the time. My parents did this to me all the time. We watched old movies from the 60s. Everyone was smoking, especially Bette Davis. And my parents would point out, we didn't know that smoking was bad and killed you back then. It was just something to do. So, you know, there's that funny little Simpsons gag with um, Reverend Lovejoy's wife where she says, Oh God, will someone think of the children? Oh, won't somebody please think of the children? And... It was used as kind of like a mocking thing of conservatives who wanted to censor work. And creators love that joke because it's like, hey, no, we're not making stuff for your kids. We're making stuff for you and for me. And if your kids read it, that's on you. So with all due respect, Scott, and I don't know, maybe you have kids now, so... Maybe your perspectives change a little bit, but these comics were never written with kids in mind from where I'm sitting. I don't think they're written for kids now. There's still language in, in your comics that I don't think kids should be hearing, and I don't think that there are jokes in there that I would feel comfortable letting a kid read. So, I mean, granted, it is a lot more um, safe today than it used to be. I, I'll, I'll grant you that. But this has never been a kid's comic. I, I would never consider it a kid's comic. So I don't think that's a very good excuse. And also the kids, you're not going to hear from. I mean, really, you're going to hear from the adults. And so that's why we have to continue. So he says, I considered opening the book with a forward explaining all of this. But who reads those? And is that enough? Yes and no. And you actually explained why the the no perfectly. What happens when someone picks up the book, skips forward, and just jumps in the middle and reads a strip? Um, which is what you do with collections like this. Here's what, here's the solution to that. The solution to that, I would include the foreword with every book that, every single book, there's just a warning that these comic strips are a part of their time. I would even like highlight certain strips that you particularly no longer agree with. But, Here's the thing. You might want to put little notes under all the strips that you have an issue with on the pages themselves, and you might want to either put a, an additional commentary under those strips, or you just put something there that directs people to the page where you explain the jokes in context. Heck, if you want, one, one of the things that Walt Disney did when the Disney studio, I should say, when they released the Walt Disney Treasures, they got Leonard Malton to explain the cartoons in today's context. And when Warner Brothers released um, the Looney Tunes cartoons, they got Whoopi Goldberg to explain some of the outdated cultural references. If you want, you can get a comics historian of some sort to write a very detailed list of what's wrong with these comics, but why it's important that we don't remove them. Why it's important that we actually do read them and we do learn from them. Yes, they're painful, but only by 
looking at how we used to think and we realize how far we've come and how far in some ways we still need to go and we always need to have that conversation going. So that's my opinion on what to do with these strips. Now, I am going to say where I'm going to throw out something else just in case you decide to edit the books. And in all fairness, it's your right to do that. This these are your books. If you want to remove strips, there's nothing there's nothing um that I can say that will convince you that it's right, although I will point out that underneath your um, store, you have a shirt that says Han shot first. And judging from the various things that I've read from your opinions of George Lucas remastering the Star Wars trilogy, if you will, um, I have a feeling you don't really agree with everything he's done. And you don't agree he should touch those films. But here you are considering doing that. Um, and I, I find that to be a little ironic. Because George Lucas's response to why he made Han shooting first was that, hey, when I made these movies 25 years ago, I didn't realize kids would be looking up to Han Solo as a role model. So I didn't want people to be looking up to a cold-blooded killer. We had to have it be in self-defense. And Star Wars fans are like, that's stupid, it changes this context, it does all of that, and, you know, I kind of feel the same way here. Yeah, you can say, say like, hey, I, 20 years ago I was a different person, but you know what, we've invested in these comics, and your career, in this series, and we want to preserve it the way it was, warts and all. Now then. What happens if you decide, for whatever reason, that you want to remove these strips or you want to edit them and you want to clean them up a bit because you're just so horrified at what you have seen? You know what? Here's the thing. You're free to do that. However, I'm going to have to ask for a refund at that point. Now, this is not me threatening, but you have to offer refunds if this is the road you decide to go down. Your fans the va bought, contributed to this because they were promised the first 20 years of PvP in their entirety and that these would be the definitive editions. And it's not definitive or, or the series in its entirety if the comics are censored. And here's the thing. I mean, I'm even looking at like these. Like, look at this comic right here. You can see Troll's butt crack. Some parents might find that offensive for their kids to read. Or they might personally find that offensive. But that's obviously one of your favorite comic strips. You can't please everyone. You can't please everyone. So, I mean, look at this. Look, what, look at what this is suggesting. Ducking autocorrect. Ah, duck. Duck. And... We all get the joke because, um, you know, autocorrect, you know, he's trying to say something else. But can you imagine being a parent who has to explain that to their kids? Once you start cutting strips and you start censoring, there's no going back. And it's a non-winning game anyway. Someone's always going to have a problem with something. My personal preference would be add the introductions and put little annotations next to every comic strip that you feel you no longer personally agree with. It could even say something simple like, you know, I personally do not believe in this joke anymore. Go to page seven and read the explanation as to why I no longer agree with this. I think most people will understand. Most people will understand. But here, and here's the thing. If you want to start removing comics... Again, that's up to you, and I think most of us would understand that too. You're clearly troubled by this, and you're troubled enough to ask us. So this is why I'm giving you feedback. But I have to also be frank. If that's the direction you want to go, I'm going to need my money back. Because that's not what I signed up to support. I mean, I wouldn't be, have been reading this thing 
for most of my adult life if I didn't love it and I wouldn't have contributed almost $300. Actually, it probably was $300 after shipping if I wasn't a fan of your work. However, <laughs> I want to be uncut, warts and all. I believe that the extended commentary or heck, maybe even additional commentary underneath certain strips could provide a great opportunity for extra communication. I remember a situation, and this is where we'll end it, where you made a comic strip that made fun of Christians. And the punchline was where Cole said, and remember, um, brothers and sisters, uh, Jesus taught us tolerance. And a lot of Christians got offended by the comic. Not me. I mean, I am a Christian. I am. But I was saddened by the comic more than anything because, and this is where I sympathize where you're coming from, because, yeah, I understand. I kind of looked at that. It's like I, I kind of felt like you were insulting me. But here's the thing. About a week or so later, you wrote a um, apology post. And first of all, you corrected. You said Jesus taught compassion, not tolerance, which I, I appreciated you correcting, by the way. But the other thing is, like, you said you didn't realize you had that audience reading you and you forgot that until that comic strip came up. So... I think that was incredibly wise and noble of you to acknowledge that. And I and I believe and I forgave and I moved on. And here's the thing. If you apologize in your books and you put them in the context and you stress you do not approve of these today, you would write them differently if you could, but you can't. They are what they are. I believe people will forgive you. I believe they will. You have, I believe you have good friends. Uh, why do they say friends? You have good fans. I've, I've personally spoken to a lot of them. And, you know, they'd be okay with that. So, that's my ultimate suggestion. Added commentary, annotation notes, no censorship. If you feel like you have to go down the censorship route, that's fine. But, offer people who don't want censored books um, refunds. The other options I can think, I don't know how costly they are, um, you could make the uncensored books exclusive to Kickstarter and then put the censored books out for the rest of the world, make them collector's items. I don't know how much that would cost. Or you might actually want to even offer a bonus book. Like... I, I, I would hate for you to do this because I want the whole collection chronologically, but here's the thing. If you absolutely feel strongly about this, like you should remove these comics, but you still want to give the fans who want the definitive um, comics their comics, create one additional book. It doesn't even have to be very big. Remove all the comics that you have a personal issue with and put them in a PvP, the Lost um, Comics book. It can be a Kickstarter exclusive. That's just one more thing. And in that book, you can explain why the, the comics were removed from the main books, what your problem with it is now, what your mindset was. You can add a whole lot more commentary. Heck, you can even make it like a numbered series, seeing that it won't be published outside the Kickstarter. I mean, that might be the best solution for everyone. Although, again, I believe it should be uncut, but this is, of course, up to you. This is just what I'm suggesting i'm throwing you some ideas but anyway that's where i'm going to leave this i mean hopefully i look forward to seeing what your decision is and um yeah by the way uh, <laughs> you're a little late on delivering the books but that's fine i've been waiting more i waited five years for shenmue 3 so i will wait an additional several months for pvp anyway for everyone else um i'm curious what you think about all this do you agree disagree i'd love to know comment below like favorite share subscribe and as always Blame responsibly. Have a good one.